Hatem Benarfa, a prodigy who was touted as the next best French footballer in his generation, over the likes of Samir Nazari and Karim Benzema. Loved for his technical abilities on the pitch, but scrutinized for his discipline, attitude and work ethic off the field. One of the most polarizing characters of the game in the mid late to late 2000s into the 2010s. The streets will never forget. Hatem Benarfa. So yes, people, welcome back to another video on the Big Steph channel. And today we're going to be talking about a very polarizing character in Hatem Ben Arfa. A player who many of you wanted to see on this series from the time I announced it. Hatem Ben Arfa is a player that the streets will never forget. So why not start off a backstory on his career? Born into footballing heritage, Hatem's father Kamel played for the Tunisian national team. Hatem joined his first club at the age of seven, and after only five years of playing, he was scouted and invited to join Claire Fontaine Footballing Academy, an academy that specializes in training and developing young French footballers from the Ile de France region. This academy brought through the likes of Nicolas Anelka, Thierry Henry, and later down the line, Kylian Mbappe. He became the youngest player in his class in the academy and stood out as one of the most outstanding players for his performances and displays. However, during a series of filming behind the scenes of the prestigious academy, Ben Arfa is seen getting into a dispute with a young, another young talent, former Arsenal midfielder Abu Diaby. A combination of what would ultimately make and break the feisty character of Hatem Ben Arfa. At just the age of 15, Ben Arfa was regarded as one of the most exciting talents to come out of France, ready to become the next big player from the country. In 2002, Lyon offered €150,000 for the services of Hatem, where he would pair up with future Ballon d'Or winner Karim Benzema. After impressing together at youth level, they were promoted to the first team after just two seasons. One big influence in this decision was Ben Arfa's outstanding performances in the 2004 Under-17 European Championships, where he scored three goals and tied for the tournament's leading scorer, helping France all the way to lift the cup before beating Spain in the final. Over the next three seasons, Ben Arfa would rack up silverware, winning three league titles with Lyon, even though he played sparing minutes. He only managed four goals and four assists over this time for the first team, but however, fans saw a bright future in the highly touted Frenchman. The 2007-2008 season looked promising for young Ben Arfa, scoring eight goals and adding another six assists, his best numbers yet as a pro, scoring in a Champions League brace versus Stuttgart, assisting in both games against Bordeaux, who finished second that season, and AS Nazi, who finished fourth, and also scoring against sixth place Rennes. His displays helped Lyon to win the league and cup double, along with winning the Trophy de Champion at the beginning of the season. However, with these good performances and numbers, Ben Arfa couldn't keep his name out of controversy. Speculation started to swirl around the club, stating that Benzema and Ben Arfa had fallen out, putting the club in a tough predicament. They tried to offer Ben Arfa a new deal, but ultimately he left the club to join rivals Marseille, burning a lot of bridges with the club president, Jean-Michel Alos. According to the article from 2008 by The Guardian, Hatem stated to a local outlet, Le Progress, Lyon were not classy about paying their players and often forgot to include bonuses in their pay slips. Lyon's financial director, Mariano Fasoli, responded by revealing that amidst all of the items remain in Ben Arfa's training ground locker room, he carelessly left behind a check for 90,000 euros. By quote, to accuse us of being financially disorganized is a bit of much coming from him. All of this going on, Ben Arfa left Lyon with four league titles, a French Cup, and three French Super Cups before joining Le Olympion for 12 million euros. His start to life at Marseille went well, with 10 goal contributions in the first 13 league matches, including two assists in the UCL group stages. Everyone knew Ben Arfa was a talented, but the narrative of an attitude and troublemaker began to follow him. Just two weeks after his move to Marseille, he got in an altercation with Brille Cissé in training, leading him sent out on loan to Sunderland. After his bright start at the club, he wouldn't manage a goal contribution in the league from November all the way to the end of the season in May, finishing with eight goals and six assists. Marseille finished above Hatem's former club Lyon, only adding fuel to the fire as the following season, Le Olympion went one step further and not only finished above rivals again, but they also won the league title, their first in 15 years. Things overall at the club were in a good place, but for Hatem, he didn't impress much. Only managing two goal contributions by January of this season, after Marseille dropped out of the, out of the Champions League group 
finishing third in their UCL group, featuring AC Milan, FC Zurich, and Real Madrid, who now featured his rival, yes, Karim Benzema. During this time, more and more issues popped up. A bus stop with Modest and Bambi refusing to warm up in a match against PSG, and sometimes allegedly blatantly not passing to teammates in training. So much negativity surrounded his talent, just like his whole career. But amongst the chaos, the second half of the season, things would improve for the Frenchman. He managed 10 goal contributions in the second half of the season, including the winning player of the month in February 2010. This uptick in form didn't do much to convince him to stay, however, as that summer, Ben Arthur forced his way out of the club, going on strike and refusing to play for Marseille again. Stating to French outlet Le Keep, I will never go back to Marseille. It's finished. I'm ready to play. I'm ready not to play for the season. I have my pride, my dignity. I am not a stopgap. He received many offers from a host of clubs around Europe. And after difficult negotiations, the French club finally struck a deal for Newcastle for a loan move with the ultimate package to buy for 8.5 million euros. This move looked promising. A French prodigy still with so much to offer at a high level, a change of scenery might be exactly what he needs to show the world his true talents. You can't forget, he was now a five-time league on winner. Newcastle hoped he could be their catalyst in their return to glory on Tyneside. In his full debut for the Magpies, Ben Arthur scored an outstanding long-range effort versus Everton to only add Cole to the already steaming hype train. An outstanding strike from no less than 25 yards out sent the away fans into ecstasy as it provided the game-winning goal, but it wouldn't take long before disaster would strike for the Frenchman. In the game at the Etihad against Manchester City, Ben Arthur was running out with the ball before being clattered by a reckless tackle from Nigel Dion, also known for his infamous World Cup tackle on Xavi Alonso. This tackle, after just seven minutes, ended his season before it could really get into full flight. He suffered a fractured tibia, sidling him after just 170 minutes of football for the Magpies. A devastating way to end your fresh start to a new club. 2011-12 season for Newcastle is remembered by Premier League fans globally who followed the game closely at the time. From a Newcastle perspective, they brought French striker Dembaba, who scored 16 goals and got four assists as Newcastle made an unlikely finish for European football under Alan Pardew. Some may also remember the jaw-dropping brace by Papi Cissé versus Chelsea that season. But this season was remembered as the Hatem Ben Arfa highlight reel season. After missing the first five league matches due to an ankle injury in preseason, he slowly worked his way back into the starting eleven. Even though his numbers weren't matching up with his world-class output, his dazzling performances made him one of the most enjoyable players to watch that season. In a game against Bolton, Ben Arthur received the ball inside his own half as he spun the Bolton defender Ricketts, leaving him for dead as he barreled down on the Bolton defence with the ball stuck to his foot like glue. After skipping past two challenges and running literally straight through the Bolton defence, he calmly slots home the finish to secure one of the most iconic solo goals in Premier League history. His dribbling and close control was effortless. Quote, it was a joke at how good he was. We'd heard about him, we heard everyone raving about him, and you saw it instantly. Natural talent and flair. Former Magpies midfielder James Perch recalled, he finished the season with six goals and six assists in all competitions. Not spectacular numbers, but if you saw some of the things he'd do on the field, you'd just sit back and say, wow. With all of this praise, however, Ben Arthur was just a character that those who interacted with him could not see eye to eye with. Even with glimpses of outstanding talent, Hatem was a player who didn't have the work rate to match his ego. After many injuries and unreliable performances, many players in the dressing room weren't fond of the player. According to an article on Ben Arthur written by Goal, former club captain Fabrizio Colosini approached manager Alan Pardew and demanded that Ben Arthur be benched, threatening the rest of the team would refuse to play if he was in the lineup. This led to him being sent out on loan to Hull, contributing only one goal and one assist on his time there. In his, fi- in his final game for the club, then manager Steve Bruce pulled Hatem Ben Arthur off at the 35 minutes as an analyst ran the numbers and showed that Ben Arthur had allegedly covered less ground than the goalkeeper in that match. This was the final straw for Hatem, and after that, he never played for Hull City again, ending his loan spell and ultimately being released by Newcastle. 
After his release from Newcastle, he was desperate to put things right, going back home and signing for French club Nice. This transfer, however, wasn't allowed to go through, as Ben Arfa had played an official game for Newcastle's under-23s before going on loan to Hull. According to FIFA rules, you weren't allowed to play for more than two clubs in a competitive season, causing him to miss the remainder of the 2014-15 season. However, Hatem was hungry for his return and during this time waiting for the 2015-16 season, he prepared back home in Paris to stay sharp and prepare to play for Nice. 2015-16 season again showed the world the high-class potential Hatem tucked away in his magisterial boots. His mercurial, his mercurial dribbling and close control along with creative ability and fiery passion made him one of the best players in Liga that season. With 18 goals and 7 assists across all competitions, he led Nice to a top 4 finish, slightly missing out on UCL but still providing fans with magical displays, going on a run of 3 straight games where he scored against Bordeaux and Saint Etienne, both braces respectively, before contributing a goal and assist versus Rennes also scoring his first professional hat-trick versus Ren in the reverse fixture of that same season. The prospect of playing for your boyhood club is probably one of the most intriguing things in a footballer's career, especially if your club is PSG. The opportunity to go home and bring glory to your hometown club was something Hatem could not refuse, and in the summer of 2016, he joined PSG. Most would say, the best move would have been to stay at Nice. Play European football in a young team that's growing, where you are the star man. You have an impressive coach in Lucien Favre, and you have investment from new owners. So why would you leave? After joining PSG, manager Unai Emery wasn't really fond of the Frenchman, who was now getting up there in age as he would be 30 and not a young, exciting prospect from years ago. Emery demanded discipline and hard work on and off the ball, not really what Ben Arthur was known for. So this was a strange signing to say the least. But, it's no surprise in an article written by Goal on Hatem Ben Arfa, it's reported that Lekeep stated the Frenchman would be making $84,000 a month just for arriving to training on time and speaking positively about the club. This, however, wouldn't cover up how bad the signing was. After being frozen out by Emery, president of football Patrick Cliver told Ben Arfa, the manager doesn't want you. And they found him move to Fenerbahce where he would be shipped out. However, Ben Arfa didn't go down with grace, as usual, not only turning down the move to Turkish club and running out his contract, but ultimately falling out with the club in general. His final moments at the club, he mocked manager Unai Emery for his French in front of all the players, cracked a badly received joke about the club chairman Nasser Al-Khalifi, and was even reportedly pictured eating outside of PSG's new training facilities at the time. After his contract expired in 2018, he would ultimately get the last laugh on the French club beating them in a cup final on penalties. <laughs> in the massive celebrations after, Ben Arfa said to the cameras, quote, this is why you should never underestimate your adversaries. A blatant dig at the then chairman Al Khalifi, who was reluctant to shake the hand of Hatem after the final. He would also sue the club for mistreatment of him while he was there as a player. After his cup final glory with Ren, most thought he would stay there, just like they thought he'd stay at Nice. But then he moved again to Real Valladolid before the pandemic, and then the pandemic hit. And now after years of bouncing around as a free agent from club to club, many fans have come to ask, what happened to Hatem? How good really was he? Truthfully, he was a superbly talented player, being compared on many occasions to Lionel Messi by his contemporaries. He had the pace, ball control, dribbling, shooting, passion to make it at the top level. However, his fiery attitude, combative personality, lack of discipline and reliability made him one of the most disappointing talents in the modern era. However, with all the talent and magic he put on display at such a young age and the amount of fans he grasped when he did it, he will forever be one of the players the streets never forget.